All right, we're going to jump in here and demonstrate some of the CRM capabilities in Rover. Um, Rover does not have a, if you would call it a bolt-on CRM module. Uh, instead, we've integrated all of the CRM capabilities throughout the system, and that way they become part of your normal work processes rather than having to go into a separate CRM menu or functionality. Uh, and so I'm going to turn the time here over to Ron, and he's going to walk through how we have done that in several specific modules within the system. If there are additional questions beyond what you see in this uh, demo today, don't hesitate to contact us, and we can walk through those things too. All right, Ron, it's all yours. All right. Sounds good. Um, what we've done here by the, the, the menu you see, I think we've talked, in fact, we can create our own menus. I've created a, some demo menus with some functionality on it. So I've taken everything that most people consider CRM functionality and put it on a little mini menu so that when people ask these kind of questions, I can direct them just to say, yes, well, here, here is what we're kind of calling CRM. And we've got, if I just go down the list and in no particular order, we've got marketing campaign entry where you can set up campaigns, uh, where you've got different um, campaigns you're setting with a detail and what action dates are going to be and which group codes are being included and are you going to mass email these people or are you going to export it to Excel? Different options on on uh, on a campaign. Hey Ron. And, yes. Real quickly, as you're going through this, you mentioned that you created this menu. Mm -hmm. So if you were a sales manager, you could just create your own menu with the key functions that you wanted. And if you were a salesperson, you might have a different set of key function on your menu, right? Certainly. As opposed okay. to just limiting larger menus through security, you can also create little mini menus that have just the procedures on it in the order you want them to, to work. Perfect. So, yeah. Uh, we do have mass email capability where you can set up, you know, the sources of these things are all contacts or customers or reps or vendors. And what do you want the subject to be and the body to be and who's going to who it's going to be sent to. So we do we do mass emailing. The contact entry, um, each contact in a customer, a vendor, a rep, uh, and a prospect are all individual records in a prospect file, in a contact file, excuse me. And, and those contacts are stored under the contact entry. This is the same contact entry screen you see if you're in customer entry and you say add a contact, or if you're in vendor entry, you say add a contact. And I'll get to that in just a couple of minutes. Um, the customer entry screen, um, for instance, if I bring up uh, a customer with number 27, I've got information, I've got multiple ship addresses, I've got every contact that that customer has, uh, including their address and multiple phone numbers and multiple email addresses if there is one. Uh, you can see these. Uh, and then there's logs where you can track calls you've had with customers or contact you've had with them and things you want to track. Who spoke to them? When did they speak to them? If you want to look and say, uh, I shipped the wrong part, what does that mean? You can open that log and you can say, okay, see everything about that log. Cutting in, Somebody may have cut and pasted things into here. Uh, you can have attachments onto this. You can, track, uh, you can track when you want to follow up. So you can schedule a follow up, which will go into our task management system and you can track tasks. Uh, so that's all just part of the log entry. And then you can have confidential notes and there's some other customer and basic customer information that we'll get back to in a, in a few minutes when we look at the customer inquiry. One of the things uh, I, I, I noticed, Ron, that you just did mm -hmm. was you pulled that up off of the bottom uh, blue bar along your screen. Mm -hmm. And so how many things can you have open down there at a given time that you might be working on? You can have 20 screens open at one time down here um, and you're still only one concurrent user connected into Perfect. the system. So okay. it gives you the ability to be in the middle of something and somebody calls you and you can minimize it and go off and do something else without having to save it halfway or bail and have to restart the whole thing over again. So a salesperson might have four different customer records open that he's working on at the same time. Certainly. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, there are groups where you can define groups and then you can assign these group codes to different customers and that works in conjunction with things like the, uh, the mass emailing, uh, and the campaign processes for which groups you're going to process. The log we took a look at, there is lost sale calculation if you want to track lost sales. There is a prospect database. The system allows you to track prospect information separate from customer information. If you want to track things like leads and people you've talked to or people you've met at shows or lists you've downloaded, you can track that in the prospect and not necessarily have to populate 
your customer file with with that junk until it until it becomes reality, and then when it becomes an order, you convert easily with one click, convert that prospect into a customer, and and go forward from there. Uh, there are sales opportunity processes. There's a control record where you can set up all of your own um, sales opportunity classes and sources and status codes and things. These are all user defined, so you can have them be whatever you want them to be. There are sales opportunity screens. I think I actually have one open here on the bottom. Sales opportunity number two, is it for a prospect? Is it for a customer? Is it for a contact? Um, what's, the, what's the status is it at? And these statuses came right out of that control record we just saw a minute ago. What's the value of the order? What's the trade show? I mean, what type is it? Uh, when do you think it'll close? What's the probability percent, et cetera? You can set up a follow-up date and, uh, and hit task.e2, which lets you assign uh, a future task to either yourself or somebody else that will show up over here in the left-hand side under the menu under, under that person's task. So it reminds them to follow up on that. And again, you can have logs and notes and you can attach quote numbers and sales order numbers to the sales opportunities to, to, to round out, you know, what the result of the sales opportunity was. Um, we have uh, the task, which we which we kind of saw. You can this today's date and time and what date and time do you want this reminder to occur and what's the subject and what's the description. And then when you save that, it goes back into this task and on a, at the appropriate date and time, it pops up on your screen, bottom right, bottom left, wherever you tell it to, uh, to remind you on a certain date and time you, you're supposed to do that. Uh, and task.e2 basically says, I want to define a task to somebody else. So it's you may not want to give everybody task.e2 as they'll be assigning tasks to each <laughs> other all day long. <laughs> um, there is warranty information. Again, some, to some people, warranties are, are CRM functionality and serial number tracking is, is CRM functionality. So you can track warranty information. You can track which serial number it's for, which documents uh, are it's for, and you know, are there uh, is there an expiration date when that warranty expires? Um, probably one of the bigger CRM screens that we talked to it a little bit is is the customer inquiry. It's got some of the basic information about the customer screen that you saw in the customer entry screen here on screen one, but it's also got summary sales data with as many months and years of history as you'd like to keep. It's got detailed sales data, which shows you all what they bought and when they bought it, what they paid for it, along with being able to drill down in and track details like the customer calls and says, what's my tracking number? You can get straight to it with a real quick uh, click. You can track all the quotes. You can track all the orders. You can track any jobs you have out there for this customer. Uh, again, CRM to some people just simply means RMAs. So we track RMAs as well and all the open RMAs for this customer, AR activity, and then again, all the contacts here. And if you want to add a new contact, you can't actually add a new contact from the inquiry because it's just that it's an inquiry. You have to add the contact from the customer entry screen. And that's easily done. Again, if you remember the scroll bar off to the right means unlimited. So you have an unlimited number of contacts that are available to you. We're just showing you five at a time here on the screen. Uh, and again, you see those logs that we saw on the customer entry screen are, are similar here and the attachments. And for some reason, somebody put a miscellaneous cash tab on here in case you want to attract miscellaneous cash. So this is probably one of the most um, helpful inquiries we have in the system. So this Our is kind of like a dashboard for the customer where you've got all of the things that are happening with a given customer. Right. We're trying to tell you everything you need to know about the customer without having you jump around to, to multiple screens. You can do it all within tabs here on the screen. Nice. And and from here, again, if you, you can drill down and go out to other processes by drilling down, and you can open up shipment screens, you can open up part screens, you can open up customer screens, you can open up other screens from here by drilling down through these fields. So that's just a, a reminder. Uh, and then... Uh, lastly, there is a sales inquiry in case you wanted to track sales for a customer. Uh, if I say, give me sales for a customer, it will show me that information. If I say, no, I want sales for a part number, I can say, let me see the part number, and it will show me my quick sales for that part number along with a graphic representation like in a demo you don't get a real nice smooth graph but you can you get the picture here where there's a graph at the bottom you can see that kind of stuff so basically to us 
CRM is, is, a, is a natural part of the whole sales marketing process and even accounting process. And it, it, it weaves its way through that. So that's why when we say we don't necessarily have just a bolt-on CRM function, we do have the, the, the full picture here that gives you everything you need to know about a customer. Great. And there's, uh, as I understand it, there's additional functions to do things like changing an order if you wanted to go in. You have all of that stuff built in on the sales side once you've created an order and you want to track it through the process, make modifications to it as well. But this is where you look at the customers and manage the relationship with the customers. Right. And we didn't, you're right, we didn't include quote entry and order entry on this on this particular menu because we cover that in the sales and marketing. And, you know, we do track change history. We track uh, security so only certain people can update things. And we track reps and commissions and all that stuff. So um, okay. that, that's all just all integrated into part of the system. But these kind of, these areas here are where your sales and marketing folks will spend the bulk, bulk of their time. Yes, more than likely. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so, again, anybody that's uh, that's looking at this this video, feel free to contact us. We'd be glad to give you a little bit more information uh, if you need it and cover some of the other specific functions. But uh, this should have given you a pretty good overview of the overall CRM functionality in the Rover system. As you can see, it's very flexible. It's designed to help you work the way you work instead of the way we think you should work. Uh, so again, thank you for your time.